One of the nice things about Sublime Text is your ability to expand its functionality by installing third-party packages to give it extra functionality, support for new languages, new commands and abilities, and things of that nature. And in this mini-series of videos, we'll be covering some packages that might make your life in Sublime Text just a little bit easier on a day-to-day -day basis. And in the very first inaugural episode of this, the granddaddy of all packages, package control. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on package control. Before we get started and jump into the video, as a reminder, if you're finding the videos in any way useful or helpful, please use those buttons down below the video to thumb and subscribe as you deem appropriate and share videos with anybody you think might also gain some benefit from them. If you have any questions or comments on the content of this video or any of the videos on my channel, or suggestions for other videos you'd like me to make, including other packages you might want me to cover in this mini series, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. The topic of today's video though is package control. I call it the granddaddy of all Sublime Text packages. And the reason for that is it's a package that helps you install other Sublime Text packages. Now, why would we want something like that? It is technically possible to, of course, install packages yourself manually, but it does require you to know a little bit about how packages work in Sublime. How you would do that on a package-by-package -package basis may change. It may require you to have knowledge of the Git version control system in order to be able to pull things down. And if you're installing a package that has dependencies on external libraries it needs to do its job, then your life is that much harder because you have to install those dependencies yourself. And that is nothing compared to the hassles of having to update packages manually if you install them manually to make sure that you're catching all of the new features and bug fixes that package authors are implementing as they update their packages and make them better for everybody. Package control obviates the need for all of that by making it very easy for you to install packages. It also automatically installs dependency libraries. It keeps them all up to date and checks for you so you don't have to. It's very much a one-stop set it and forget it system to set up Sublime and keep it ticking over in tip-top fashion. To get started, we're going to look at the package control website, packagecontrol.io. Now, here on this page, we can see a few things. The most notable is that there is a real-time ticker along the bottom of the window that is scrolling across. This is recording actual real-life operations that people are running on package control, downloading the list of packages in order to install them, both in Sublime Text and from here on the website as well. And you can see it is a very popular ecosystem. Now, package control itself actually functions as a giant repository of packages that can be searched and installed. Package control itself, as well as the source of this website, are both open source and available on GitHub. And anybody can, if they want to, create a package for Sublime Text and have it added to package control. Now, in the main part of the package control website, we can see there is just a few listings of packages here. Uh, the, there's a list of packages that are currently trending that whose popularity is on the rise. There's a selection of newly added packages, a randomly selected list of packages from the top 100 packages in package control, which is garnered by keeping package controls, keeping track of when people install packages. And you can also search for packages via label. And you can also search using the button at the top. Now, if you want to install a package, if you want functionality in Sublime and you're not sure sure if there is a package, you want to come to the packagecontrol.io website first, and you can go into the search page. And let's say, for example, you wanted to know if there's a package for working with overrides in uh, Sublime Text. You might type in the text override. And there's uh, a few packages that pop up, and oh, there's this package called override audit by yours truly. 
shameless plug. Clicking on it shows you information about a package, the versions of the package that exist, the package's homepage where you can go to file issues, and also some information on when it was last updated and installed, and this sort of information. There's even a README. Now, if you're installing packages via package control, you might want to come here and look at this page to see what the README has to say. Now this is all well and good, but how do we actually make use of this? Well, over here on the right-hand side of the page, there is a list. Uh, there is a list of links, and the top one is labeled installation. And there are some simple installation instructions for how to get package control working. The simple version of those instructions is available here on the left-hand side of the page. And basically what you would do is copy all of this text and then open the Sublime Text Console and paste it and that will install package control for you. And this in, this changes every time a new release of package control is installed. So don't save this information. Always come back to the website to get it. If for some reason that doesn't work for you, you can manually install by following the instructions on the right-hand side of the page where you in essentially download the package file and put it directly in place. Now it's not listed here, but there is actually an even easier way to install package control. If we jump over to Sublime Text itself, if we go into the Tools menu, we can see that there is its entry at the bottom of the Tools menu labeled Install Package Control. Now, this menu item disappears if Package Control is actually installed, so if you don't see this here, Package Control is probably already installed for you. But installing Package Control is literally as easy as pressing Enter on this. And we can see Package Control has been successfully installed, and it's telling us to use the command palette and type Install Package to get started. And so we could actually do that by going to the command palette and typing install package like so and now we can see down in the status line it is loading the list of all packages and here is a list of every package now here we can see we get to see the name of the package and a description and its version but we don't get to see anything else that's why you might want to go to that uh, web page the package control.io web page to actually search for packages if you're not 100 percent sure which one you want but you can filter this particular list so i could say override audit for example and find the package and pressing enter is all you need to do to install a package We'll see information in the bottom hand side of the page and a package is just installed as easily as that. Some packages when they install generate messages such as override audit here does. Some packages don't do this and that is just as easy as it is to install packages using package control. Now there are a variety of commands that package control adds to the command palette to allow you to work with uh, it and your packages. You can open the command palette directly and search for them. Or in the preferences menu, package control adds this menu item at the bottom, which when you pick it just opens the command palette with the appropriate filter for you to see all of the commands. And as we can see, there are a fair number of them in here. Probably the most common command you would use is the install package command, which is the one we just used that allows you to find any package and install it if you would like to. You can also remove a package that you no longer want. It will ask you to choose a package and you can pick one and it'll go away. Um, if we open that again, by going again to the preferences menu package control. You can also easily enable or disable packages. Now what this is really doing is just updating the ignored packages uh, setting in your user preferences for you. Makes it a little easier to do. And from directly within Sublime, if you would like to install a package and you're not sure which uh, one might be the one that you want, you can go ahead and pick this Discover Packages command, which will open your web browser on the Package Control website, so you will always remember where it is. And from here, you could say, I want a terminal program, and there's a terminal uh, package by Will Bond and various other uh, packages and you could say for example look at the terminus package which will also be the subject of a future video which allows you to have a terminal from directly within sublime text itself
So it's really quite easy to find and install packages as needed. Like most packages, package control has a bevy of settings you can use to tune it to the way that you want to work. So let's jump back over to Sublime and we'll go ahead and just close these package control messages here. And I'm going to split my window into two columns. And what we're going to do here is if we go into the preferences menu and go to the package settings, we can see there are a couple of packages here. Package control is the one we want. And we will choose settings user and open that in that panel over there. And over here in this left hand pane, I will choose the same menu command to get to package control, but I'll pick settings default. Now, most packages nowadays that have, or more recent packages rather, have just a single settings item that opens a new window that's split for you um, with the default on the left and the user settings on the right. Package control doesn't do that. It's maintaining backwards compatibility with older versions of Sublime all the way back to Sublime Text 2 that don't have that functionality yet. So you need to work it this way. And as we can see, there's... Uh, this The main setting in the right-hand side here, which is my user settings, is this installed packages setting, which is the list of packages that I personally have told a package control to install. If you save this settings file in Dropbox or a Git repository or otherwise sync it across machines, if you put this in place, when you start uh, Sublime, as long as package control is installed or right after package control is installed, it will consult the list of installed packages and go ahead and install any that are currently missing. So if you have Sublime set up on one computer and you'd like to set it up on another computer exactly the same way with the same packages, copying this file is all you need to do to get all of your packages uh, across. And this is, of course, stored in your user package. So you could copy your user package to another machine and uh, away you go. There's also instructions to do that, how to do that on the uh, package control website as well. But if we want to pay more attention to the actual default settings in uh, package control, now, of course, all of the settings that are in here are tuned to work for pretty much everybody out of the box. And I would urge you, if you're interested in this sort of package or if you have problems with package control or this applies to any package, use its settings, look and see what can be configured. That'll help you figure out what you can and can't do with that package. That said, we're only going to look at a few of the settings in here. Now, all the settings that we see in here are more or less set up to be what you would like them to be uh, in the general case for the average user. So you really don't have to fiddle with any of them yourself. As a matter of fact, Except for as a fact of being a package developer, I've only ever modified uh, a couple of these settings myself. The first thing we might want to look at here are the this setting here labeled auto upgrade. The default value is true. That makes uh, package control automatically update your packages when it starts. So every time you start Sublime, it will do a check so that it can see uh, if there's any packages that need to be upgraded and it'll just automatically carry out that action for you. There may be some packages that you don't want to auto upgrade, perhaps because you know that the next version up is uh, broken in some manner or it's a package that just uh, updates very, very frequently. And for that, there is a setting called auto upgrade ignore. And of course, you would just copy this over to your user settings in the right hand pane, add the name of any packages you would like to not be automatically upgraded and it'll not upgrade those and you'll have to do that manually. And this auto upgrade frequency setting sets the minimum frequency in hours that will automatic updates will be checked for. So package control actually creates a file in your user package called package control dot last run keeps track of the last time it actually did this check and it waits for this many hours to expire before it checks again. And again, those checks only happen on sublime text startup, not while sublime is running because that might be uh, intrusive. So this basically, the way it's set by default says that the first time you start Sublime for the day, it will check for updates. And then no matter how many times you quit and restart Sublime, it won't check again until one hour has elapsed since the last time. So if you're stopping and starting Sublime, say if you're working on a package, it won't constantly check for updates.
You could, of course, change this to whatever uh, amount you want. The install missing setting, as we can see, defaults to true. This is what causes package control to automatically install packages that are listed in the list of installed packages in its settings but aren't currently installed and is what makes syncing your package control settings across machines to set up packages work. You probably don't need to change this setting. That is just how easy it is to use the packagecontrol.io website to find packages that you'd like to install and use package control to actually install them. Future videos in this series will cover other packages that might be useful as well. Quick reminder that the package control website is run by Will Bond, the author of package control, out of his own pocket, even though he is an employee of Sublime HQ. So if you make use of Sublime text and of package control, you might want to consider donating to them. There's a link on packagecontrol.io to help keep this awesome service running. And that's all we have for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of my videos, or suggestions for future videos that you'd like me to cover, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. But until the next video, this is odatnerd asking you to please have a sublime day.